What's up, guys? Sean Brady here, back with my boy Joey Pfeiffer, breaking down UFC Vegas 67. If you uh, hear any background noise, it's because me and Joey are recording this at the gym before training, so sorry for the inconvenience. We're going to work these things out as we go, but we're just getting started. So, yeah, we're going to break these fights down. How you doing today, Joey? I'm all right. How, I'm, uh, how was training this morning? It was good. I got tired. John made fun of me. You, you, pot you potentially have some fighting news coming soon, right? I do. You cannot break it. You will not break it here because you're getting in trouble. Yeah, I won't but say it yet. But it will I be do. coming within the next couple of days. Next couple of days, I know who I'm fighting and when I'm fighting. Let's I go. just don't know where I'm fighting. It's, it's still kind of... Hopefully, weird. it's on the East Coast. I hope so. Hopefully, it's on the East Coast. But besides that, we're back. Haven't had fights in about a month. As you guys know, unfortunately, me and Joey are not allowed to bet on fights anymore. But we can give out betting advice and still mess around and, uh, yeah, give you guys some picks. Um, looking through this card, it was supposed to be Sean Strickland versus Kelvin Gaslam. I mean, it was supposed to be Kelvin Gaslam versus um, Imovov. Now, Imovov is fighting Sean Strickland. What do you think about this matchup, Joey? Oh, so we're starting from the top. No, we're, um, we're just going to talk. We're just going to, like, what do you think about him pulling out and... Yeah, just a new matchup. If being, um, being at 205, these guys are in your division, but they're fighting at 205. Yeah, um, I mean, it's going to be interesting because Imavov's obviously on a hot streak, and he's you know, he's good, really good on his feet, really good boxing. Um, he's, got think, he's got really nice striking. He's got really nice striking, but I think the last like challenge that we saw out of him was against Phil, uh, I believe it was Phil Hawes. And he, he, was coming really exhausted. he was coming on hard. In, or who was coming on? Imavov was coming on in the third round against Halls, right? Yeah, well, and Halls he, he got was, tired. He was faded, but yeah, he almost rocked. He gotcha. almost put him away. Yeah. But uh, but it was one of those fights where it looked like he was really exhausted. But then his last fight, he went out there and uh, absolutely destroyed. But now his late replacement, Sean Strickland, doesn't really seem to like falter on the, the cardio aspect, and he's fought pretty much everybody. So um, yeah, let's just start here. Yeah, keep keep. Keep going. Keep breaking it down. Let me know what you think. We'll just yeah. start at the top. Yeah, I mean, well. What do you think about the matchup? Well, first, what do you what do you think about Gaston versus Imovov? The original fight it was supposed to be. I have no. I would. Have, Gaston. Yeah, he's he's very good, but I just think he's a seventy pounder. Yeah. He's not a one eighty five pounder. Like, it'd be like me trying to fight at one eighty five. Like, I could do it, but I would just be a blown up one seventy pounder. Like, it's you you have to be walking around in. The two tens, the two fifteens to be a middleweight. Like you can't, you can't be one ninety five, two hundred. Like it just, it just doesn't work. You guys are too big. At you can get away. With, he's gotten away with it. I mean, he looked good against even Adesanya, but I just think he's gonna have some trouble. I think he should go back down to one seventy. But um, this should be a good fight. Like Imovov is very good. I'm very impressed with him. The only time I seen him lose was to Phil Halls, and that was a super close fight from what I remember. To beat Ian Heinish, I thought he was. I bet again when we were allowed to bet. I remember I was in my gym. I bet against him. I had Ian win in that fight. I lost money on that. And then um, he smoked Ed, Edmund. And then um, Buckley. That was a super good fight. So I'm super impressed with him. But Sean Strickland, he's a tough one to crack. Like even that that Cannonier fight, I kind of thought he won that. You know, it was a hard one to judge. Looking at his record, like he's only lost to. Cannonier, Alex Prayer, who's the new champ. And then before that, I mean, he hasn't lost since he was a, a welterweight. So, um, yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a pick. I think it's a pick them for a reason. It's going to it's gonna be a tough one to pick. Well, I don't like, I personally don't like Sean's style whatsoever as far as the boxing goes. Yeah, but, but uh, it works for him. It works for him. It's what he's good at. I just think it's really like, uh, it's just kind of, it's a, I don't know. It's just unorthodox uh, for traditional boxing or even MMA boxing, but because uh, I think they're a little bit different. But I don't yeah. know. I think I give the edge and speed um, and, and the, the sharpness going to Imavov. But I mean, at 205, he's going to be carrying more weight. I did know, like, I personally, when he fought Phil, Phil Hawes, he looked really tired. I don't know if that was just that particular fight. Yeah, but yeah. I've never really seen Sean Strickland, like, kind of gas. That's true. But and, it's a, and it's a five round fight. Yeah, so. You saying I that, I mean. It's tough. Like the odds right now have them at a pick them. Yeah. I will say though, Sean Strickland did not look that good against Cannoneer, I don't think. I, I mean I don't think either one of them looked their best, but Sean's hard to look good against. Yeah. So I think Imovov's gonna have a hard time looking good against him, but I don't know. I, I see I can see how I 
can see how Imavov will win, and I can see how Sean Strickland will win. Sean can jab anybody for five rounds and win a fight. But I like Imavov. I think he's going to win. I'm going to ride with Imavov. This is a five-rounder? Five rounds, main event. Well, I think I, I think that sways everything for me. I think I'm going Strickland. You're going to go Strickland? Yeah, I think in a three-round fight, I think Imavov's yeah, got it. Yeah, it's, it's, I, it's I main I'm event. Gonna, it's five rounds. Yeah, I forgot about that. And it's at 205. Going, I'm going Strickland. Now. All right. That's... Yeah. Well, my, I already put my bet in, so <laughs> there's no going back. All right, next one. This should be a good one. Dan Ige versus Damon Jackson. Dan Ige, let me see real quick. Let me pull up his record. I think Dan Ige is on a nice little skid, but if you look at this guy's record, he's literally only losing to the best guys in the world. He is... <coughs> he's 15, 15 wins, 6 losses, and he's... On he's three fights, good. Yeah, he's he's one and four in his last five, but he lost it to uh, Mojar. How do you say his last name? Ivalov. Ivalov. Like he's a killer. He lost to Josh Emmett, the Korean Zombie, and then before that, Calvin Cater. You really can't. I mean, his strength of schedule was crazy. I personally am a big fan of Dan Ige. I think this is going to be a great fight for him to bounce back. But Damon Jackson, on the other hand, Damon Jackson's twenty-two and four. He just came off a big win against one of our teammates, Pat Sabatini. Um, so, obviously, we know how good Pat is, and I think Pat beats this guy <laughs> nine out of ten times. Unfortunately, he just got caught. But um, I'd like to see Pat get this one back. But not to take anything away from Damon, he's super tough. He's got really good grappling. I think um, his path to victory would be to drag Dan to the floor. Dan's been taken down before, but I think Dan's got that dynamite in his hands. And who was it that knocked out Damon Jackson with that body head? It was um, a, a Ilya Tapuria. Ilya Tapuria, yeah. So I could see, I could see that kind of same thing happening here with uh, Dan Ige. I'm picking Dan Ige by knockout. Let me know what you think about this going. Yeah, I mean, this is this is a three rounder. I don't. Know. Yeah, I think, it, I think Damon's good enough to at least like kind of evade some damage for a little while. So I would probably take Dan Ige uh, on like a double bet. Over points prop just because um, you think he'll win by points. <coughs> I mean, look, I, I yeah, I, I could see Damon being able to like just keep shooting and, and trying to be exhausting mm-hmm. if he doesn't get caught. And Danny Gay hasn't really like put anybody, I mean, he hasn't put anybody out. Obviously, he fought really tough guys. The last yeah. guy he put away was Gavin Tucker. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, yeah, being as though Damon Jackson has gotten knocked out before, yeah, uh, I, I mean, it's, it's a tough fight. Because Damon Jackson is good, but he's like a wet blanket once he gets on top. You have one hundred dollars in your pocket. Who are you putting your one hundred dollars on? Mm. What's your? I think I'm gonna have to go Damon Jackson. Honestly, wow. I think he can grind it out. All right, I do. I think he can grind it out. All right. Next one up. You guys gotta show me something different. Next one up. Puna Soriano versus. Roman Kapalov. These are your your weight class, right? Yeah. All right, I'll let you start it off. Tell well, me what you think about this matchup, Joey. So I think it's a great matchup. Um, immediately right off the bat, I think it's going to favor Soriano because he's a physical, uh, like strong yeah. Um I'm not sure if he's Hawaiian, but I think he is. I think, he's, Samoan. I think he's, he's Hawaiian, I think. Yeah, Samoan, Hawaiian. He's, he's a beast. He's, he's, a, he's, a, he's a big boy. Um, His last fight against Dolce was... Yeah, he smoked him. Yes. Um, I like him, too. I got to meet him. Real nice guy. Uh, I mean, he had a decent fight against Brendan Allen. I watched that, but he did seem to get really gassed out. Uh, I, I Honestly, when I saw him, the first thing I asked him, I was like, how did you lose to Mac, Nick Maximoff? <laughs> and uh, he, he just kind of, like, didn't show up mentally or whatnot. Yeah. So I think, uh, I think he's got that killer instinct in him. And obviously, he's got... A, pretty sure almost all of his finishes are first round um i don't know i don't see copy lot being able to bully him unless he goes the wrestling route so i guess we'll see what do you know about him. what do you know about his opponent copy Lob's like a grappling based type guy he's not really that that great of a striker in my opinion um mm-hmm. you know so i think he's i think his path to victory is going to be trying to take him down uh but i'm pretty sure the copy Lob, is he the one that head kicked uh that Alessio DiCurcio. I know he beat him. He finished him, but I don't remember if he TKO'd him. I'm trying to pull. Head kick. I'm trying to pull up right now. I don't know why I can't do it. I don't know. My prediction though is I think Puna knocks him out. I think he finishes him. Um, you think Puna knocks him out? I do. I think I, if I have a hundred bucks, I'm putting. Yeah, him. like you were saying though about him losing to Maximov. I watched that fight and it was a weird fight. Like 
Puna was kind of like hitting, like going for these switches to hit, and he kind of wasn't getting them. And he was hurting Maximov on the feet, but then Maximov would shoot, and like he would like kind of stumble and just end up on the end up on the ground. I don't think he should have lost that fight. Like you said, I think he just, I mean, listen, you only got one chance to show up, and if you're not 100% there, then um, it's not going to be your night. But I like Puna. I'm a big fan of Puna. I'm going to take Puna by knockout. It's actually fun, too. Have you seen it? You seen it? Uh, he posted, uh, I don't know if you follow him, but I follow no. him. And he, he posted like his meme mug when he fought Brendan Allen. He's like walking in the cage, and he like walks right into the Oh, he walked cage. into the fence, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I see that. <laughs> that was funny. But yeah, I, I like Puna, so I'm going Suriano by uh, KO. It's, um, Haven't seen enough out of the other guy. What's the next fight? My topology is uh, right. Catlin Vieira versus Raquel Pennington. Raquel is 14 and 8, and Vieira is 13 and 2. Uh, Raquel Pennington here. Uh, she's on a four fight win streak. She's uh, on a four fight win streak? She is. She beat Marion Renal, Kianzad, uh, Macy Kiesin, Aspen Lad. Um, three decisions, one finish uh, with a guillotine choke. And her last loss was to Holly Holm. Um, but she hasn't been finished since Amanda Nunes. So I think that, I think her track record's really good. Um, I really think that she's going to be able to probably guess out Vieira. But I don't know. <coughs> uh, Vieira beat Holly Holm last out and Misha Tate. Uh, so both kind of good stiff competition there. Yeah. Um, Raquel obviously being the veteran. I'm, I'm going to slightly lean Vieira just because I think she's a little bit more physical. Yeah. She's uh, socially, she's pretty strong. I think she'll be able to win some of those clinch exchanges. Like, I feel like they're going to be clinched up. Like, Raquel Pennington, Raquel Pennington, like, her fights are always in the clinch. And I feel like um, I feel like Vieira's just going to be a little bit stronger. I'm not looking too much into that one, but... Decision. Yeah, 100%. Don't pick somebody to take a decision. <laughs> somebody by decision. Go to distance. All right. What's your next one? This what's is next Umar Nurmagomedov, who's 15-0, and 0, uh, and then versus Ronnie Barcelos, who is 17-3, and 3, and I think that's going to be really interesting. Uh, I think Barcelos is really good, um, even though he did lose to Victor Henry and Timur Valiev. His last uh, – he's won, he's won in two of his last three, but uh, his last one was a uh, decision over Trevor Jones. So – yeah, it's going to be interesting. I, obviously, you got the Nurmagomedov kid who's a really good grappler and uh, seems to have, have a flawless victory of just complete dominance. Everything's unanimous. No split decisions. Uh, his last, obviously, he's never lost. He's 15-0, but his last three were Sergei Marzovov, who was 16-3, Brian Kelleher, 24-12, and, and then he beat Nick Manis, who uh, was 14-1, who's uh, a pretty decent wrestler. So. I think the path to victory is pretty clear. Nurmagomedo, got to get it down, submit him. Um, I'm not, I don't really see that being far fetched, so I'll just go Nurmagomedo. <laughs> yeah, I uh, obviously, whenever you have somebody with that last name, uh, it's probably going to be looking pretty good for him. But um, Hani's tough. He's super tough. He's fought some really, really good competition. He's only got three losses. I think, I honestly don't think he's going to get finished here. I think he's going to lose, but I think he's going to. I would take Umar by decision. I see Umar as a future champion. Um, yeah, he's good, man. He's he's got really good flashy kicks on the feet. His hands are good. His obviously his wrestling and submissions are good. Um, yeah, I see him winning the decision. Might have some trouble early on, but um, yeah, I see him getting it done. Is he not ranked or is he top fifteen? I don't, I don't know if he's ranked. That's crazy. How you can be fifteen and zero and not be ranked? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I think he fought like three, four times. Mm -hmm. That's wild. Yeah. Next one, back at middleweight. Go ahead, Joey. Every middleweight, you're breaking it down. Abdul Razak Al Hassan versus uh, Claudio Ribeiro. I'm going to say that this somebody fight, is getting knocked, knocked out in the first round. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I, now I, it's going to be the fight that goes to the decision. It's yeah. going to go 15 minutes, and nobody's going to get touched. But yeah, no, they, they might both be scared to engage. On paper, somebody should get knocked out in the first round. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. Um, I would take this fight to not go to distance. I wouldn't really pick somebody it's, because I think it's a wild card. I try to look it up. The odds aren't even out yet, but it's going to be like minus probably 1,000 for the fight. Finish. Finish. Yeah, 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 100%. But um, Abdul, all of his wins, 
all first round knockout. All 11 of his wins. So, like, he's either winning by knockout or losing a decision or getting finished. Yeah. So, I definitely think, I don't even know too much about the other guy. I know you were saying he's just supposed to be pretty wild. Yeah, well, he had his contender series win where he was just, like, swinging from the hips and he caught the guy and just the dude just tanked right yeah, over. Yeah, I see that. So, it's going to be interesting. I just don't, I, I don't know. I, I think I would take him just because he's the wild card. He's younger, I think, um, by a little bit. Yeah, by seven years. Uh, Abdul is 37, and uh, this kid is 30. So if you had to pick one of them, you would pick Claudio. Claudio? Yeah. yeah. I think uh, he's the new freshman. I think he wants to go. So. I'm just going to say, as soon as these lines open up, take first round knockout. As soon as that line opens up, because it's going to get juiced. All right. Um, next fight, not too interested in that. Um, fight I am interested in is... Um, Javid Basharat versus the guy I'm not even going to attempt this man's name. Not even, not even going to play my homie and try to pronounce his name. Mandanka? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not even going to disrespect him. He's Brazilian. That's all I can see on here. He's 10-0. Javid Basharat is 13-0. Javid, I first seen him on the Contender Series. Um, and then his brother was supposed to fight on the Contender with you, and his fight got canceled. Yeah. And his brother... Later, it got scheduled. It looks super good. I like this guy a lot. Um, I heard from listening to other podcasts that the guy, he's, his opponent's supposed to be really good. Just unfortunately, he's fighting Javid at this point. And uh, Javid is, I think, he beat Tony Gravely, like out-wrestled him, and Tony's really good. So, yeah, he looks like uh, a future contender, and I'm really excited for this fight. I'm going to take Javid Bashara by decision. Yeah, I agree with that. I think I'm going to go the same route. I don't really think this kid has... I mean, he's also 23 years old, so he, he's built his record the correct way to get into the UFC. Yeah. He's finished everybody like he's supposed to, but I don't... I don't. I mean, I think Javid's, like, really crisp with his boxing, so... Uh, and he's a little bit more yeah, his short. hands. his hands are really good. His wrestling's really good. His submissions... I think he got a third-round submission on the Contender Series. He looked really good. I think he got a guillotine choke in the third round. Um, yeah, against the kid that... Uh, he had beef with yeah, yeah, yeah. He was saying he was saying some some fucked up shit to him, and then he choked him. So that was cool. Sarge is the opening fight. Sajar Eubanks. I think Sarge is gonna smoke this chick. Uh, I hope it's at 135, or I'm sorry, 125, because I know Sarge is having a hard time making 115. So if it's at 125, she's gonna have the size and strength, and um, I don't know what the odds are on that, but I can see Sarge definitely winning that fight. You see anything else on here? Jimmy Flick's coming back. Remember, he retired. Now he's coming back against um, Charles, Dr- Charles Johnson. Johnson. He fought um, that Muhammad Mokab kid on um, his he debut. Lost. He lost, but then he came back and he won his second fight. <coughs> so that should be a good one. This is a it's a good card, especially for the first one of the year. I, I actually I don't think that I don't know I'd like I don't like the Sarge Bank fight. You don't like it? I don't like it. Tell me, tell me what you're feeling. I think that girl. Tell me what I you're think feeling. going to be able to keep it on the feet. Uh, you know what they call her? No. Uh, Priscilla catch a beating because she eats so many punches with her face. Do they really? <laughs> I swear. Like the zombie girl. They call her the zombie girl, but they call her the one dude I watch break down fights and I listen to his podcast. Oh my god! I, it's pretty disrespectful. He calls her Priscilla. Pr- Priscilla catch a beating. Because I guess she gets yeah, but hit she beat, But she, she walks forward. But that's what he says. Yeah. She walks forward. She gets hit. She's the she girl that has almost like the bombs. man bun type haircut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she goes out there and she goes she goes hard, though. She she knocked out um, Lipsky. Ariane Lipsky. She, yeah. I thought she was going to win that fight. And then she, she's she got two fights. Before that, she lost to Jillian Robertson. It, it's Jillian's not, good, though. You see what she just did to Rose? Yes. Yeah, Even, good. obviously, it's grappling. But she choked her in like did less than a minute. Did you guys see what I did to Eric Anders? I'm just, I'm just fine. I'm just fine. <laughs> don't. 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 <laughs> Don't do my boy Eric right now. Nah, Eric's cool as shit. I like him. God, <laughs> God damn it, Joe. <laughs> I had to mention it. <laughs> cut. Cut. If you look up and down this car, Joey, tell me your favorite fight you're looking forward to the most and give me your best bet. Umar if Namaga you Mano. don't win this bet, your dog doesn't eat for one day. Ooh, how good. <laughs> I do have a dog. Uh, Umar Namagamato, 100%. Uh, yeah, but he's going to be minus 7,000. All right, well, then I'm going Puna Seriano. Just what? Mm, straight up. Straight up? Straight up. I, I can't imagine he's going to be a big favorite. He, I would expect him to be a tiny bit of a favorite, like maybe a 
minus 200. Minus 164. Respectable. Respectable. Want to know what Umar is? Umar is like a minus 1250. <laughs> minus 900. <laughs> oh, my. Is that on FanDuel or Draft? Uh, this is on FanDuel. They still let me lock. They st- well, I can just pull up the, um, the numbers. Yeah. My best bet's not out yet, but it's going to be... Oh, oh wait. Let's see what it is. Uh, Abdul and uh, Riberio's fights just came up. Let's see for this mm-hmm. fight to not go the distance. Riberio's definitely. To not start round three is uh, minus 550. So it's can All right, round props. No, method of victory. How do you, how do you see just um, how will this fight end? Yeah, KO see. is a minus 430. You can't bet it. I mean, you can tie it in with a parlay, though. It's not that bad in a parlay. Let's see. You could do like an Umar. I would take the Sean Strickland, Puna, Umar, and KO. For minus 430 and put those in the parlay. I would do a hundred bucks on that. Minus 210 for this to fight to end in round one. Over, so we can't. <laughs> minus 210 for it to end in round one. That's, that's not bad at all. That's not a. That's not a best bet though. Yeah, I gotta get something better. <sighs> well, what's what's Puna? You said 264. Minus 164. Uh, KO points. That's no, no, that's high. pretty good. Minus 210. Minus 210, Abdul and Riberio's fight ends round one. And then if you just if you do method and round one, it's got to be pretty good. So, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Um, first fight's back in four weeks. I'm excited to watch. Yeah. A lot of guys in your division, obviously you already have a matchup, so there's no welterweights on here. I know you'll be watching this card very closely, studying some of these boys, getting yourself – Mentally prepared for the future. <laughs> getting it fired up. <laughs> oh, I was going to say they can't see, but they can see your stupid ass on camera. I'm getting fired up. <laughs> so, eventually, guys, we're going to have a name for this podcast. We're not sure what it's going to be called yet. Me, Joey, and our, our, boy, <laughs> our boy Kurt. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, <laughs> see that? We got sound effects. We're going to we're going to get these bugs out, and everything's going to be cool, but... Thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, always sign up for Steady Picks. The bets are always free, guys. They have NFL, basketball. They have everything. They do fucking tennis. They do tennis. They do all kinds of shit. So if you're trying to win some money, sign up for Steady Picks. It is free. Peace out. That's pretty good, boys. Not bad. Not bad for the first one. The first one.